it, part of it is, there's a word called invidious, which means it's just, it, it's out of someone who's mentally deranged, I guess. And that's Carly Berger, who decided to keep from having uh, Perrin Mitchell, just Perrin Mitchell, man, come to the College Park campus. He established a separate sociology school in Baltimore City to teach only Perrin J. Mitchell. He sent letters out warning parents that, uh, and he selected all the white females' parents and said, Perrin Mitchell was coming to College Park. I can't protect your daughter. Now, is that the man? More importantly, you gotta understand that if the only reason Morgan State University was acquired by the state was at the behest of Curly Bird. He thought by funding Morgan State University and the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, he would keep blacks from coming to College Park. And do you know that Thurgood Marshall, after leaving court one day and going and, and dealing with this Curly Bird said, you know, Maryland's just way up south. <laughs> And it was <laughs> Curly Bird who controlled the fabric, and you gotta understand, that's why people are vehemently opposed. I spoke here in 97 and said we should dismantle the Bird Stadium. And I haven't been invited back since. <laughs> <laughs> and actually went to, and, and my timekeepers give me a signal too. And, and more importantly, I say to you, Keith gave you one parent's closing remarks, and I'm going to add it. The parent won by 38 votes, and that was 1970. All of you were here, young Sandy Rosenberg. They didn't have much of a headquarters on Park Heights. They had to guard the voting machines. And guess who were in charge of the voting machines? The police of Baltimore City. Imagine them counting the votes. And they had declared Friedel the winner by 500 votes. And Heron got some of it. That's why he stopped to have a sip of Thunderbird. <laughs> so, with the folks in the neighborhood, and the people in the neighborhood came and surrounded the voting machines and dared the police to tamper with them. And it came out that finally Friedel admitted that Heron J. Mitchell won this house seat by 38 votes. We've got to know that, and I mean, these are the last two things, that Dr. Kiefer Jackson Mitchell, senior, the doctor, who kept Perrin, you know, there were many times, even when Perrin first ran for office, people advised him not to run because of his medical condition. But he thought an obligation to serve and was committed to fighting for the people. And my late brother, who just uh, went from labor to reward in August of this year, was there keeping Perrin uh, in good shape, as he did Professor Gibson and all of us. That's why we look so well. <laughs> And do you know that Curly Bird, and this is it, I am giving as a gift. Is it all right, uh, Professor Gibson, that you gave it to me? Share with, and it should be permanently memorialized in this building. The lawsuit of current, this is every pleading that was filed. And the only thing that Bird admitted to in the pleadings was that he answered yes, Perrin Mitchell was a Negro. Every, that was the, in the, in the response to parents' pleading. And more importantly, you've got to understand the vision. It, it, it was unusual. And that's why uh, the, 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 I'm going to ask the Polhouse family to stand. I think they're here. Their father was Francis J. Polhouse, a young lawyer from said Nixon should have gone to uh, San Quentin instead of San Clemente. <laughs> so with that, Kiefer, with all due respect, uh, Karen and how uh, he, he closed the place. He said, uh, that comes from a, a Methodist, black Methodist minister from the Eastern Shore. It's called Beans of Heaven. And Karen used to hum that, he says, as he walked from Route 1 to the sociology building. And mind you, he thought that even Bird was controlling the buses because there was a lady coming from the park. They could storm. Every 
other day, his son was, got the bus to on time, but he, he was left to the elements when he said he made it across North Africa. He certainly could make it here to get a degree. You should note that I'm leaving you also an article from the Afro of 1934, saying that the University of Maryland and President Curly Bird had, had even refused to grant an admission slip, I mean an, an application to Clarence M. Mitchell Jr. to attend the sociology school. Don't you know that Curly Bird is turning over? That now you got Karen Mitchell here. You got Clarence Mitchell there, and then Karen would say, because we were deeply religious, harder yet may be the fight. Often wrong may yield to might. Wickedness a while may reign. Satan's cause may seem to gain. But there's a God above who rules with hand of power and heart of love. And we shall have peace someday, and the Bird Stadium name will be removed. And more importantly, Young people will go on. Isn't it? Isn't it some we invite these mushrooms down here to speak and they already <laughs> so the fact the president knows orderly process. But it's the spirit keeping us. And because as they sang at the Frederick Douglass thing, oh freedom, oh freedom of me. And before I'd be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Thank you.